So let's see this all go through end to end. And remember, you don't actually have to deploy this to a testnet if you don't want to, but if you want to follow along, feel free to do so, of course, as well. Get started. Let's, of course, compile fundme.soul. Looks good. Let's delete any contracts deployed previously. Let's make sure we're on injected provider MetaMask, and let's make sure that we are on a testnet. We are indeed. Let's make sure we have a little bit of testnet ETH in our wallet, and we sure do. And let's go down to the contract and make sure we're on the right contract. If you try to deploy something like an interface, you'll get an alert like this. This contract might be abstract, blah, blah, blah. So we're not going to do the interface. We're going to do the FundMe contract, of course. We'll hit deploy. MetaMask will pop up. We'll go ahead and hit confirm on the MetaMask. And then we're going to have to wait a little bit for the contract to actually finish deploying. If we pull up the terminal, we can see the contract go through. And we can also see it in Remix here. Now we've got a number of buttons in here. We've got our red fund button, of course, which is because we have our fund function, which is payable. And this allows us to send ETH with this function. We have our withdraw function, which is just orange because it is not payable, although it is going to be withdrawing money out of the contract. And then we have our typical blue view and pure functions. The owner, of course, is gonna be our MetaMask, since we are the ones who deployed this contract. Minimum USD is going to be five. And these are, of course, going to be empty. We can call our fund function only if we send some value with it. If we try to call fund without any value, we're going to get this gas estimation error failed. And we'll even see didn't send enough ETH in the error log. So let's go ahead and cancel this. Again, we could send this, but that would be a huge waste of gas. So we'll cancel it. And let's get a value that's going to be enough. So I believe 0.01 ETH should be enough. Let's say 0.01 ETH. It looks like that's about $18. So back in Remix, let's do 0.01 ETH in terms of way, which is this value here. Paste that in. And we'll scroll down. Now, if we call fund, it does indeed go through. And we can go ahead and hit confirm on this as well. And we see that transaction pop up on Etherscan. And we might have to wait a little bit for this transaction to finish finish going through, finish indexing, et cetera. So let's give it a couple minutes. Oh, it looks like it's gone through. Fantastic. We can even see in the FundMe contract, the balance has gone up to 0.01. And we can see if we look at funders at index zero, we can see our address. And if we copy our address and paste it into the mapping, address to amount funded, we do indeed see an amount in here. With this transaction fund being called, of course, on the testnet etherscan, we can see all the data and information associated with this. And we can even scroll down and see the input data. We can see that this was calling the fund function. We'll learn more about the input data later. So now what we could do is we could do the reverse. We could go ahead and withdraw, and that should reset the mapping and the array back down to zero. For our modifier to work, we have to use withdraw on this account. If we switch to an account that isn't the owner of this contract, and we go ahead and reconnect, and we scroll down, we make sure value is zero and we scroll down and try to hit withdraw. We'll see we get gas estimation failed and we'll even say sender is not the owner. So we'll go ahead and cancel that. We'll switch back to account one. We'll make sure we're working with account one. Now we'll call withdraw. We'll see MetaMask does indeed pop up and we can go ahead and confirm. And in just a minute, we'll see the balance reset. And if we call our funders and mapping, they should also have been reset. So let's wait a little bit. Now, if I try to call address to amount funded with that same address, we now get zero. And now if I look at funders at index zero, it actually errors and this is incorrect. Following our more advanced solidity concepts, if you don't understand them the first time, don't let them stop you. They are not required to know to continue. The following is an excerpt from a slightly older edition of this course. You'll see that I don't use named imports like a noob and a few other pieces of the code look slightly different. But this next section, we're going to go over a lot of really advanced Solidity pieces here that are going to really advanced Solidity fundamentals. These are going to be fantastic for saving gas, making your code look a lot cleaner, and just better coding practices overall. For those of you who are looking to go super far with this, definitely be sure to pay attention to this section because this will make you look like a badass when you code later on. Just remember, when we say JavaScript VM, we just mean Remix VM. Additionally, whenever we deploy to the RinkB testnet, just know that you should be deploying to the Sepolia testnet or whatever the most up-to-date testnet is. Or just don't deploy to the testnet and just follow along. 